<laughs> when I was with the Kansas City Monarchs, I didn't hit any home runs. And I came here, hit 19, and then the next year, 44. I mean, just, just wonderful playing in this park, the wind blowing out. Uh, day games. I played all day games here, and it was just uh, a great place to be. Throw the first Campana back on his belly. What a place to play here. Gosh, my God, this is beautiful. And thanks, we didn't have no lights here when I played, and it was just wonderful to come out every day and play in the sunshine and enjoy the fans and, and win the games. It's pretty amazing, Ernie, that you can come back into this ballpark and know that almost 60 years ago you played here and it felt probably just like it does today. How many years ago? <laughs> Not 60 yet, but we're getting there. That anniversary well, coming up in uh, 2013 for you. It's wonderful, and the fans are just wonderful. Now, these are the children of the fans that saw me play. Well, Campana got a great jump as that ball barely got away. From Przinski on a wild pitch. Well, that speed changes everything. Tony Campana running for Alfonso Soriano at first base. We saw the White Sox pitch out. I'm sure it changed the pitches that A.J. Przinski called for his right hander out there on the mound. This one gets into the dirt just briefly, and that's all Tony Campana needs to make it to second base. Is he faster than Lou Brock, Richie Ashburn? He's pretty quick, isn't he? He's really quick. I would defer to you on that one since you played against those guys and with those guys as Soto swings and misses. Well I did that with uh, Richie Ashburn who played for the Phillies and left hand hitter like he is and I had to play really short when you hit the ball to you one or two hop and he has got it beat it for very very quick and this young man has the type of speed. Blake DeWitt's going to bat. Lopez, who was outstanding today. And of course, I've roomed with Lou Brock, and Lou, Lou was just naturally fast. I mean, he could a good jump, he knew how to slide, uh, he, he knew how to play the game, a very smart guy. Ernie, congratulations on a few things. Number one, you turned 80 back in January. I know you don't feel 80. <laughs> you don't look 80, but it is a number. <laughs> what is that? Congratulations. A great well, I haven't seen you since your birthday, so I wanted to. You were that's satchel a big sad. Birthday. How old would you be if you didn't know how you was? <laughs> how old would you be? How old would Ernie Banks be if he didn't know how old he was? Well, my satchel page used to say that. <laughs> But I learned that from him. Look nice at that. Play as Quentin had to battle the sun. How old would you be, Ernie? You could just pick a number. <laughs> I don't know. When I come out here, I got you know, just feel young and vibrant and you know, feel like I want to play and can't get out on the field and run and all of that. But it, it's just fun. It's great to to do it. And, and as you all know, getting old, you don't have to do it but just one time. That's the joy of mine. You always feel younger when you come here. There's no question. Yes, sir, dear. Uh, you've been recognized as a living landmark by Landmarks Illinois, the first sports figure to receive that accolade. And you were in Atlanta in May and received the very prestigious Beacon of Life Award. It was a civil rights weekend. That must have been a lot of fun for you. And congratulations. And it was a great thrill to be there. And to be around all the people who created the history of uh, the civil rights movement and especially Hank Aaron. Hank is a good friend and you know it was just wonderful and be there with Morgan Freeman and Salos Cantana it was just uh, a wonderful time. It was something I'll never forget. One strike on Koske and he looks at strike two. What a beautiful day. Wind blowing in, temperatures in the low 70s. And Koske couldn't hold up. Gavin Floyd gets through the seven. Cubs lead 3 0. Mr. Cub, Ernie Banks, always a pleasure, sir. Thank you very Thanks much. Thank you, guys. Keep up the good work. Thank, Thank you, you, Ernie. Ernie. Thank, Thank you. 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 Thank you
Mike presents Five Seconds to Glory. Mark versus listening to his wife. I was over at Jim and Nancy's today. Do you remember them? We had dinner with them a couple weeks ago over at Jill's house. Yeah! What would you do for a Klondike bar? Verizon 4G LTE, now available in Indianapolis. Rule the air on the fastest 4G network in America. New satellite with Sleep and Charge and Resolution Plus. If we don't include the Impact Smart hard drive, we can ship today. Mm -hmm. oh. No. That satellite has to have an Impact Smart hard drive. The all new Toshiba Satellite Series. We thought of everything. Klondike presents Five Seconds to Glory. Nate versus Sharing the Grill. <laughs> what would you do for a Klondike bar? Hey, there's Ernie Banks. How would you like to hear the stories about legendary Wrigley Field from the players who lived them firsthand? Now you have the opportunity. Cubs great Milt Pappas, for instance, will be leading tours on both July 9th and 10th. For more info or to purchase tickets, call 1-800-THE-CUBS or visit cubs.com. Tony Campana, who pinch ran for Alfonso Soriano, will stay in the game and left. And Kerry Wood will make his second appearance since coming back from the DL. I was activated before the game on Friday and tossed a 1 2 3 8 inning, including a strikeout. Was on the DL with a problematic blister on his finger. Hopefully, that's a thing of the past for Kerry. What can you say, Bob, about Rodrigo Lopez today? Uh, he was fantastic. I mean, obviously, had really good stuff to work his way through this White Sox order. Seven times did not allow a base on balls only two hits this had tremendous command especially as I mentioned earlier that sinking tailing fastball was able to keep the White Sox hitters off balance all afternoon tremendous job great as always to visit with Ernie Banks on the bottom of the seventh <laughs> Every time I see Ernie, he always asks me, yeah, can you still catch? I give him the same answer every time. Ernie, I can get down into a crouch. I just can't get up out of it anymore. <laughs> Reels held up on a curve ball. One ball, one strike. White Sox have only had Four base runners, two on hits. Marlon Bird in center with the grab for the out. They've only had a runner in scoring position one time. That was in the third inning. The Daily Double Burger is back for a limited time at participating McDonald's for $1.89. Hey, Lynn Danielle Alexa from the Cubs event operations office wants to say hello to the chorus family here today from Phoenix Arizona curveball in the dirt to Tian but well, such a good pitch Terry has used it a little bit more as the season has gone along. Fastball at 95, rising. One and one. Crack bat fly ball. Kosuke coming in. He's going to slide and just simply knock it down after it hit the turf. If Tian doesn't break his bat, that's an easy play for Kosuke. 
As it is standing out there in right field you see the full swing at the plate from a guy that's got some pop in his bat. See the trajectory of the ball off of the bat but because the bat was broken it just didn't carry anywhere. Got out there in shallow right field really died. Koske realized he wasn't going to be able to make the play cleanly just wanted to keep it in front. And that's exactly what he does. Just knock it down on the grass. Make sure you can see the ball in front of you. Pretty key guy here Gordon Beckham because on deck is Paul Canerco potentially representing the tying run if Beckham gets on. It will be Canerco as the tying run. Tian makes a turnaround third and a bobble by Koske. First and third with only one out. A couple of bloop singles. Well, the Tian hit, at least he took a full swing and broke his bat. This one, Beckham just looks like he's trying to fight that ball off. Pulled his left hand in very close to his body. Actually took his right hand off the bat. Just kind of flipped it out there into shallow right center field, but they all count. Let's see one big advantage and it's really the only one you get when your best hitter is not in the lineup and that is you can drop him in wherever you'd like late in a game and for Ozzie Guillen this couldn't have worked out better in terms of getting Canerco off the bench. Curveball looked pretty good but Kerry Wood couldn't get the call. Galaxy pitch tracks. It looked like that curveball caught the very bottom of the strike zone. Starts right in the middle. It's not where Geo catches it, it's where it crosses the front of the plate. And that time, like Bruce Dreckman took one away from Kerry. Yeah, and that, as you say, Bob, affects everything. Now, 2 0 count, a lot different than 1 and 1. Marshall up in the bullpen. Juan Pierre is on deck. Very rarely will you see Juan Pierre batting right behind Paul Canerco. Protection. Swing and a miss on a fastball. Two and one. Good location. Yeah, that's the matchup people pay money to see. A good fastball pitcher on the mound. A two and zero oh count. Good fastball hitter at the plate. You're going to challenge with your best stuff, and that time Kerry Wood spotted it right on the outside corner at the knees. Two and two. Another one. Good location. Geo does this uh, with regularity. You see him banging his glove behind the back foot of Paul Canerco to try to make him believe that he's moving inside. It's by and the White Sox are on the board. Tian's in and Beckham now at second on the wild pitch. He just tried to overthrow that breaking pitch instead of rolling up there in the strike zone. He really pulls it over in that left handed batter's box. Tough one for any catcher to get in front of that pitch. Three and two on Canerco. Woody needs to make a pitch here. He doesn't want to walk and put the tying run on base. And on the hands fouled off. 
Canerco gets on. I would guess Ozzie will pinch run for him. Two iconic Chicago baseball players matching up here in the eighth inning. Kerry Wood and Paul Konerko. With the game potentially on the line. It's another matchup people pay to see, as you alluded to earlier. There it is. And he walked him. So it will be Mike Quaddy to the mound and Brent Lillibridge to pinch run. Sean Marshall coming in and see Toyota call to the pen. Marshall against Pierre when we return to Wrigley Field. customer I like non-stop travel because it's quicker because it's convenient it's just the best way to go keeps the cost down Southwest Airlines has added new non-stop flights from Midway to South Carolina it means more time doing the things I want to do it's easy it's hassle free There's no headaches fly Southwest Airlines new non-stops from Midway to Greenville Spartanburg and Charleston South Carolina I like non-stop travel because <laughs> you don't got any more stuff <laughs> <laughs> Let's go after the DMV. It's okay that we're number 403. We'll find ourselves a comfy seat and watch some shows and stuff. Let's follow that lady with the laptop. Now you can watch hit TV shows on your laptop with UVerse Online and on your smartphone with UVerse Mobile, included with most plans. Or get UVerse TV for as low as $29 a month for six months. In the network, you can take entertainment with you. What do you drive? Is it inspiring? Or is it built by a behemoth car maker? Or insightful craftsmen obsessing over the details, building better cars for a discerning few? Are you one of the few who care about what you drive and how it drives? We're with you because we believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. We build Mazdas. What do you drive? See, Toyota call to the pen. Left-hander Sean Marshall. In for Kerry Wood. Runners at first and second. A run in. 3-1 the Cubs with the lead. And Juan Pierre coming up for the fourth time. There's Lillibridge, a pinch runner for Conerco. Beckham is the lead man at second base. Pierre one for four with two strikeouts against Sean Marshall. They're hit into a double play earlier in the ball game. That L1 back in the third inning lined out to Rodrigo Lopez. He was able to turn throw to first to complete the double play. Six times this season Juan Pierre's grounded into a twin killer. Ramirez on the grass at third. Pena playing behind Lillibridge at first. Double play depth up the middle. And against Pierre, that means in a couple of steps and a first pitch strike on a fastball, which is going against the grain for Sean Marshall. Normally, you'll see a breaking ball at first pitch. Foul on uh, a breaking ball. 0 oh 2.
The closer Carlos Marmol is already up which would lead us to believe that if needed he'll pitch here in the eighth let alone the ninth. And he didn't work yesterday. And Bob, you you have certain days, and this would qualify, where you, you pull out all the stops. You try to squeak out a win. Now, no team likes to get swept in a three-game series, especially at home in front of a full house like this today. The fans have been into it all afternoon. A tremendous start by Rodrigo Lopez. You'd really like to cash this one in. I mean, ideally, Marshall gets you through this eighth inning. But if he needs to go to the closer, he will. of third base and in foul ground Ramirez makes a catch two away here comes Mike Quaddy with Alexei Ramirez do up Really defensive swing that time by Juan Pierre on a breaking ball headed for the dirt. You can see Giovanni Soto getting ready to block it. Somehow Pierre gets underneath, flips it in the air to the third base side for the second out of the inning. See the third Cub reliever here in the eighth inning. The Toyota call to the pen. It'll be Marmel against Alexei Ramirez when we return. Are you still on for dinner? Oh, I can't. You know I've got the bar exam. Well, good luck. Thank you. Okay, one more time. This bar means the Coors Light is cold. And this bar, the Coors Light is super cold? Congrats, you just passed the bar exam. Woo! Introducing new super cold activation from Coors Light. With two stages, you'll know when your beer goes from cold to super cold. So you're a lawyer? Huh? No. Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Edmunds.com says that Lexus holds its value better than any other luxury brand. J.D. Power & Associates ranks Lexus the highest in customer satisfaction. No wonder more people have chosen Lexus over any other luxury brand for 11 years in a row. Get 2.9% financing on the 2011 RX 350. See your Lexus dealer. The home side is simply going on crop. Some watch simply for the love of the game. I'm a big guy. Others seek out the best players or the biggest matchups and wait for the unpredictable outcome. But for most fans, it's about experiencing every magic moment live as it happens, one history making play at a time. Switch to Xfinity and get TV, phone, and internet for just $99 a month for 12 months, plus an HD DVR free for three months. Call 1 800 Xfinity today. Carlos Marmel trying for the four out save today. It's the Toyota call to the pen. First action since Thursday. So well rested. Alexei Ramirez one for six against Marmel. Two on, two down, slider strike. Swing and a miss on a slider. Strike two. That was quick. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, Alexei Ramirez. And the inning is over. They get a run on a wild pitch, but strand two.
to a Subway restaurant, what are you saving up for? Are you buying a private island? No. Building your own space station? No. Are you getting a robot butler? No. Upgrading the bionic legs? What? No! Are you building a secret city at the bottom of the ocean? No. I just like saving money on the food I like. Oh, I knew that. Every day after 4 p.m. and all day Sunday, you can get one of many regular footlong subs for only $5, two for $9, or three for $12. Subway. Eat fresh. For the past 25 years, the Summer Iowa Games has been a tradition for Iowa's amateur athletes. I may not be an amateur in football, but I am competing in 25 other events to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Iowa Games. I challenge you to find your sport. I promise I won't be playing football, but watch out if you're playing table tennis. Celebrate the tradition of the Summer Iowa Games, powered by the Iowa Food and Family Project. Visit iowagames.org for details. David Kappel with a Suzuki Sportsnet Central update. We have you covered for all your post-gamer action. To the Crosstown Classic finale, we'll be at both clubhouse. We'll hear from Mike Quaddy and Ozzy Gian, Todd Hollinsworth, Belt, Bill Melt. Join me on set with Jim Riggleman from the north side. It's all after the final out on Cubs post-game live at the Crosstown Classic. Now, back to Wrigley, to Lennon Bob. Cap, thank you, Brian Bruni is on for the White Sox. Deals ball one to Darwin Barney. Bruni against Barney. Cubs don't necessarily need a run against the White Sox bullpen in order to win today, but wouldn't it be a good idea just just get them for at least one this year? Yeah, just to reverse the trend. Sox bullpen has been lights out against the Cubs this year. Going into action today, their bullpen against the Cubs, 16 and a third scoreless, nine hits, zero walks, 22 punch outs. Two and two. Yeah, Brian Bruni, however, is a guy who can walk some guys. Uh, 11 innings, he's surrendered eight walks this season, struck out nine. Lefties have a lot better success against Bruni than righties. One pitch away from a leadoff walk here in the eighth. This was a combo that got it going in the fourth inning, Barney. And Castro with Ramirez following with that big home run as Barney strikes out. Uh, and Bruni gets Barney to chase a pitch off the outside corner on the 3 2 count. Well off that outside corner. Again, we want to welcome all the fans watching on Comcast Sportsnet outside at the Wrigleyville Block Party. Stay tuned, Rod Tough Curls and the Bench Press coming up right after the game. No admission, everyone is welcome. Castro fouled back. Cubs happy birthday wishes to Andrew Frohawk, born here in Chicago, now lives in Lexington, Kentucky. Again today, the White Sox uh, mostly with Alexei Ramirez at shortstop, shading way up the middle of the field for Starlin Castro. Yeah, I would consider Starlin to be a gap to gap hitter. A lot of his base hits come up the middle of the field. But most teams play him straight away at all positions because he will hit the ball down the right field line. He'll shoot the hole on the right side of the infield and pull the ball if you make mistakes inside. But a lot of his hits have come right back up the middle. So the White Sox play Ramirez 
a few steps that direction. Looking ahead to the White Sox ninth, Dunn, Quentin, and Przinsky. Don't have to worry about Paul Konerko anymore. He pinch hit, walked, and then was removed for a pinch runner. What a piece of hitting by Starlin Castro. Just stayed alive, stayed alive, and eventually lined one into right center. Our Felco upcoming game schedule. One more week of baseball before the three game or the three day All Star break. Four at Washington, three at Pittsburgh, and then after the break, a long homestand starts with four games against Jack McKeon's Florida Marlins. 33rd multi hit game, second most in the NL for Starlin Castro. All Star Jose Reyes with 43 leading the way. The Nationals getting pounded today 10 to 2 by the Pirates in the night. If that holds up, it'll be a 2 2 split in the four game series. And the Nationals have cooled off since Davey Johnson took over. They would be 2 and 5 since Davey Johnson grabbed the reins. Castro could probably get at least another full step maybe two steps on his lead over there at first Brian Bruni does not possess a good pickoff move over there AJ Przinsky's only thrown out 11 percent of the runners attempting to steal this year however I don't think Starlin's going to run unless Aramis Ramirez falls behind in the count two strikes then you may see him try to steal a base but as hot as Aramis has been, you want to allow him the luxury of pitching the picking the pitch that he wants to swing at. Three and zero. Oh. Former Cub Will Omen. And you see on our galaxy picks tracks, Brian Bruni just didn't want anything to do with the Ramos Ramirez at all right there. Four fastballs well out of the strike zone, up and away. Here comes Omen, two on with one out, Cubs lead 3-1. July, the classic Subway Italian BMT is the next featured $5 footlong of the month. With chicken Genoa salami, spice-tacular pepperoni, black forest ham, and melty cheese. It joins our $5 footlongs in July only. Subway, eat fresh. It's all new with the five-star frontal crash rating. Five stars means safe. Five-star protect. Five. Crash rating. Five-star side. Size two, three, four, five-star crash. Side crash rating. Oh. Side only. Side only. Side only. Side only. Lots of cars get five stars in one category, but not in every combined category. The one, the Accord sedan. For great leases and low financing, visit your Honda dealer or shophonda.com. Walls can talk, but it's our job to make them say something interesting. So how about this weekend we learn some new tricks of the trade, then break out our doing clothes and get rolling. Let's use some paint that helps us get the job done in record time and makes a statement when we're finished. We're lowering the 
cost of a new favorite color. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Get $5 off gallon cans of our top paint brands now through July 4th only. Now, for a limited time only, Subway has nutrient-rich, flavor-packed avocado. No way. Way. Creamy, smooth, avocado really ups the flavor ante. Try the turkey and bacon avocado. Grab the green today at Subway. See, Toyota call to the pen, a familiar face. Left-hander Will Ullman, former Chicago Cub. Left-handed specialist. Lefties have hit just 210 against him in his career. A former Cubs eighth round pick. Facing Carlos Pena. Two on, one out in the eighth. Cubs already leading by two. Well, Krasinski got a big break. That mm. ball actually hit the batter, Carlos Pena, and a good job by Starlin Castro to read that. That's why you keep your head up on the bases. Don't assume because a pitch is in the dirt that you can easily advance to the next base. A pinball game back there. Ball hit in the dirt, hit Przinski, came up, hit Pena, and came right back in front of A.J. Fortunately, Starlin Castro saw the whole play right in front of him and was able to get back to second safely. a called strike on a fastball. Lots of sliders and heaters from Will Oman against the lefties. He's pretty predictable in that he tries to throw his fastball inside to the lefties to set up the slider away. Some left handers will work the fastball on both sides of the plate. They'll throw their slider right at a left handed hitter working for the inside corner. Oman is basically fastballs in sliders away. A change up he'll mix in against righties but doesn't throw it much because not asked to really get a lot of righties out in big spots at least fly ball on the deep right center sun causing a problem what a catch by Quentin that's two times now He's almost made the catch with his eyes closed. That reminded me of Marlon Bird's catch last year when he turned his back to the ball and it fell in the mitt. On the play, Castro tagging and heading to third. Look at that. Oh, yeah, you could see him battling it the whole way, trying to play the ball out of the sun, but because of the trajectory, it stayed right up there using his glove. He's got the sunglasses on, still has to turn away at the last instant. Manages to make the backhanded catch, although Starlin Castro tagged and advanced on to third base. First and third, two outs. And the pitch to Marlon Bird. Fastball for a strike. Strike again. As a runner at third base, right now is when you really have to be on your toes. A two strike count on a hitter, chance a pitch might be bounced in the dirt to try to waste a pitch right here to Marlon Bird. Be ready for that wild pitch pass ball. Swing and a miss. He struck him out right. He's have done a lot of damage against Will Oman prior to that at bat, but not that time. They lead two. Marmel back out for the ninth, with the Cubs leading 3 1. If I were a customer, I like nonstop travel because it's quicker, because it's convenient. It's just the best way to go. It keeps the cost down. Southwest Airlines has added new nonstop flights from Midway to South Carolina. 
me is more time doing the things I want to do. It's easy. It's hassle-free. There's no headaches. Fly Southwest Airlines' new non-stops from Midway to Greenville, Spartanburg, and Charleston, South Carolina. I like non-stop travel because <laughs> you don't got any more stuff. <laughs> I don't know what to Hi. Hi, are we still on for dinner? Oh, I can't. You know I've got the bar exam. Well, good luck. Thank you. Okay, one more time. This bar means... The Coors Light is cold. And this bar... The Coors Light is super cold? Congrats. You just passed the bar exam. Woo! Introducing new super cold activation from Coors Light. With two stages, you'll know when your beer goes from cold to super cold. So, you're a lawyer? Huh? No. Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. I'm Bill Wennington, and I took my share of body blows playing for the Bulls. But that was nothing compared to the hit I took when I learned my sister had cancer. She was only 38, and my whole world turned upside down. If this happens to you, contact the American Cancer Society right away. Their free, hands-on support gives patients their best shot at getting well. Today, my sister's a survivor. If someone you love is fighting cancer, get the American Cancer Society on your team. Tuesday, the Cubs are in the nation's capital to take on the Nationals. Coverage starts at 5.30 with Chicago Tribune Live. And then the Cubs and Nats Tuesday at 6 on your home for Cubs baseball, Comcast, Sportsnet, fans, best friend. Right-hander Ramon Ortiz will make his Cubs debut that night. National starter still to be announced. Marmel and Dunn matching up here in the ninth. strikes Adam Dunn now 0 for 15 against the Cubs this season with nine strikeouts one walk see his numbers against Marmel Pop flying again. That's the Sunfield right now. Fukudome will make the catch. Good job by Darwin Barney backing him up from second base. He was out in shallow right with a shift on. Well, you'd like to think that your right fielder, especially a guy that's played a lot of right field here at Wrigley, can battle that sun and make the play. But just in case, Darwin Barney out there in the vicinity. Case Koske loses it in the sun. Darwin will be right there to scoop it up and hopefully keep Adam Dunn at first base. White Sox have only four hits on the afternoon. They only had four yesterday in a one nothing win. Two and zero on Quentin with Przinski on deck. That's it, you Bob. <laughs> Slider strike. I'm assuming that young man was trying to put the whammy on Carlos Marmel, but it's not working. It's like the kid from Parenthood. Pops it up. Soto able to locate it. Two down. And the White Sox will maintain possession of the BP Crosstown Cup, but the Cubs plan to win the season series finale today, and they're one out away as A.J. Przinski will dig in.
Owen oh 2. Marmel came in with two out of the eighth and quickly struck out Alexei Ramirez on three pitches. And he's trying to go one, two, three here in the ninth. And he does. Cubs win. Cubs win. 3-1 the final. Rodrigo Lopez gets his first victory as a Cub. Carlos Marmol, as sharp as we've seen him all year. What a pitching performance today, Bob. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, the bullpen at times throughout this homestand has really been taxed, but Rodrigo Lopez just with a tremendous start today. Not only did he work deep into the ball game, he completely stifled the White Sox offensively. And everybody that trotted in and out of the bullpen today able to get the job done. Nice win. Our GMC player of the game is Rodrigo Lopez. He got his first win as a cup. Seven stellar shutout innings. We've talked about uh, quantity rather than quality at times for the starting staff for the Chicago Cubs this year, but today Rodrigo Lopez gave Mike Quaddy both. Cubs went four and four on the homestand. They knocked the White Sox back under 500. Gail Fisher standing by with the guy who got the save. All right, Len, thank you very much. Carlos, nice job. A four out save for you. How important was it for you to come out here and shut down these White Sox? Well, the first of all, I was I was feel good, you know, commanded the A's. Uh, I would say I did a nice job. Talk about the job Rodrigo Lopez did today, too. Seven innings, only two hits all day. Well, he pitched well. Unbelievable. The way he pitched today, I'm proud of him. But it didn't feel good, you know, about him and about us. We played good today. Yeah, it's been a real pitcher's duel, especially these last two games. You guys were on the verge of possibly getting swept, but you avoided that. Is the White Sox Cubs series still one of your favorite rivalries? Yeah, you know, it's nice to play the White Sox first of all, and then, you know, it's good that we win it. We don't want to get the, the sweep. Largest crowd ever, by the way, for a Cubs White Sox series. Can you feel the energy today? Yeah, it's a lot of energy today. I still feel good every time that, you know, that we play together. And, and there's great energy, you know? All right, good save for Carlos Marmon, a good win for the Cubs. Lennon Bob, let's send it back to you. Gail, thanks. So Lopez, the winner, one and two. Gavin Floyd pitched well, but he's 0 and 2 against the Cubs this year, six and seven overall, and Marmol with his 17th save. That's going to wrap up our game coverage. Stay tuned. A lot more to come. Coors Light post game live right around the corner. Final score today the Cubs three and the White Sox one. Our next Cubs telecast here on CSN will be Tuesday night at 6 o'clock from our nation's capital. In game scoring provided by Scorepad. And now for Bob, for Gail, for our entire Comcast Sportsnet crew, Len Casper wishing you a happy Independence Day. And we're going to send it over to Cap in our downtown. CSN Studios. Hi, I'm David Kaplan. Inside our Comcast Sportsnet Studios, Crosstown Classic has come to an end for 2011. We're about to break it all down for you here at our studios. Plus, we'll go inside the Cubs and Sox clubhouse for post-game reaction. Bill Mel, Todd Hollins will join me for Coors Light, Cubs post-game live, Crosstown Classic style. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Here you go, soft pretzels and root beer float. How could I forget? Side of mustard, too. Comcast Sportsnet serves it up. Catch us on Sportsnet Central or see us on Chicago.com. Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. A little more, and whoa. Yeah, nice. Agents, what do we have here? An auto hotel. I've only heard about these. And? And we can save them hundreds by combining their auto boat and home policies all under farmers. Exactly. Are these legal? Yeah. <laughs> no. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. To speak with a farmer's agent in your community, call 888-96-FARMERS.
Don't be the last to know. Get it faster with 4G. It's the network of possibilities. AT&T. Are you going to the game or looking for a place to watch it? The Captain Morgan Club on Addison and Sheffield is calling your name. Open year-round with 30 flat-screen TVs and an outdoor patio. Come to the Captain Morgan Club to watch the Cubs and every sporting event. Tickets or no tickets, we're calling all captains. It's all new with a five-star frontal crash rating. Five stars means safe. Five-star protection. Five crash rating. Five-star side. Five, two, three, four, five-star crash. Five crash rating. Side only. Lots of cars get five stars in one category, but not in every combined category. The one, the Accord sedan. For great leases and low financing, visit your Honda dealer or shophonda.com. Cubs baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines new Rapid Rewards, unlimited reward seats, and no blackout dates. Menards, save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Xfinity, Cubs baseball in high definition is brought to you by Xfinity. Midas, for brakes, oil changes, and tires, trust the Midas touch. AT&T, and by Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealer today for great savings on Toyota's all-star lineup of fuel efficient vehicles official partner of the chicago cubs this is coors like cubs post game live i'll get it done as rios goes back on this ball to the bleachers. Hello, welcome into our Coors Light Cubs post game live. I'm David Kevin with Todd Hollinsworth and Bill Melton. Cubs salvage one of the three this weekend. They win it three run over the White Sox. We go right to Wrigley Field. Brought to you by Xfinity. Here's Mike Quaddy. Funny game, isn't it? He was outstanding. Came up a little hamstring in the seventh. I thought we better go to our bullpen. So, but uh, I don't mind you. What do you have? 70 pitches, 75 pitches. It was not many. It was not many. And and uh, you know he went right after. Him. You know and they put balls in play, but uh, that's kind of what he needs to do. And yeah, he really does. And you need to play good defense for him because he's going to pitch to contact. So, um, so it was good. And stay hot, Rami. So. Little, yeah, a little, just hamstring tightness. He came off in the seventh, and, and uh, I'm not, I think I'm smart enough with a two-hit shutout or whatever it was. You know, we're going to be hitter to hitter with the guys I've got ready, but, we, you know, we were debating, and, and he, he stopped the debate when he came in, so nothing serious. You know, and, and along those lines, Dempster will not make his start tomorrow. So he's been under the weather. Uh, he's got a little hip and back issue. Um, but we expect him to pitch on this trip for the break but we're going to back him off uh, several days um, so he had a rough day yesterday and, and he, he looks better today but we're going to give him a few days and we'll see how he feels I don't know when we're going to slot him in but we expect him to pitch before uh, before the break and Casey Coleman is on a plane and headed for DC he'll make the start tomorrow is this, uh, does this go back to what he had in Cincinnati you know I don't think so Bruce I, I you know what it didn't even you know it just you know when I got here Today, you know, he was he was just uncomfortable. And he hadn't. I knew he hadn't felt good, but I, I don't think so. I think that was groinish, wasn't it, Peter? But I, 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 I'd say no. I, I'd, I'd say no. I don't think so. Well, he, he wasn't feeling very good. He had I don't know if he had a little stomach flu or something, and they kind of you know he went to bed and and when he got out of bed trying to take care of this his hips and back so just that whole region is just uncomfortable right now it doesn't give him the flexibility he needs you know he'd he'd pitch i'm sure but but we're not gonna we're not gonna push it so anyway so casey gets the start and then ortiz on tuesday is everybody in your rotation did he open the <laughs> you said it i did <laughs> so um but this looks short term, so God bless that. Um, obviously, you felt good about going normal with four outs. Of yeah, he has plenty of rest, and uh, he's had, you know he's he's done a good job, particularly against Ramirez. And I think you know I have all the faith in the world in Marsh, but 
I thought that was was worth a shot. And he's got good numbers against Dunn, too, so. We talked with you about Castro before the game, but went out and had kind of an all-star performance with that triple and played good defense. Did really, yeah, he, he really did and has been. And, you know, it's, you don't get to go there by accident. You know, I mean, people recognize that he's a very good young player. <clears throat> I didn't realize he was the youngest Cub to ever go, and um, that's a feather in his cap, too. Good for him. And uh, I can only think that it, at 21, you know, potentially how many of these games he might get to show up in. So, because I think he's going to be even better than he is now, maybe way better. Talk about uh, Marshall not making it and how well, he deserves it. You know, I think, I think, Bruce and I had a long talk with Boach when he was here um, after he was kind enough to have me come with him. And he was filling out a roster, and, and more times than not, I mean, I really felt like Marsh and Cassie were the two guys that that have had the best first half and been healthy and could represent us. And then it's kind of based on need. And, I, I, you know, I'd love to see both of them make it. I don't know what the what happens if you've got pitchers on that squad that are going to pitch that Sunday before the All-Star break and then they won't be eligible starters. Could, are you an alternate? I mean, those things I don't know. But, um, you know, I think Marsh is the kid in Atlanta and Marsh are the two best left-handers in the league for sure in my mind. And so I would have loved to see him go. And the thing about it, too, is not just to see him go. I mean, <laughs> some of those left-handed hitters in the American League, you deal with him. And, I, you know, I, don't, I haven't seen the American League roster, but I'm sure there's a few. So um, anyway, so if there's something that comes up later. But um, both those guys I thought were very deserving. Starting pitching, going deep in games, been an issue all season. Has to be makes, makes my job easy. And when you've got a bullpen like, like I have to go to, Ozzy will tell you the same thing over there. You know, you get into the seventh inning, it's it's fun to manage. But you start making decisions in the fourth, it's not fun. So, uh, so that was no, that was fantastic. And uh, and then we were rested. You know, it was good. What, what Garza did yesterday, unfortunately, you don't get a win out of it. But it had everybody ready to roll, and and we're really in good shape for the road trip. We'll see how these kids start for us the next couple of days. Pitching staff. All right, so the Cubs beat the White Sox in the finale today, and we bring you Mike Quaddy by Xfinity. And David Kaplan, Todd Hollinsworth, Bill Melton. Bill, I'll start with you. Yeah. For two days, <laughs> the White Sox Tell me about it. really yeah, struggle yeah. with Cubs starting pitch. Yeah, we really did. We talked a lot about it. Todd's been talking for a couple of days about how tough uh, their starting staff has been and giving up a lot of runs, and they have been. I mean, it's tough to have a pitching staff when you only got a couple of guys like uh, Dempster and, and guys are throwing well, and the other three guys are journeymen and stuff like that. And, you know, teams are scoring a lot of runs. And, you know, with, a, with an offense, you can't really catch up a lot of times. Now I'm sitting watching my team get two runs in two days off supposedly a pitching staff that's not uh, throwing real well. And you look at uh, Lopez today, and he's got an ERA, of, an ERA of almost a seven, and we had two hits. So, yeah, it uh, was a matchup of... Uh, I don't know who did it. I don't know if they were that good or we were that bad, but the results are a win for the Cubs. Easily. Easily a win for the Cubs. You look at Matt Garza was outstanding yesterday, as was Philip Umber, and he gets a W. Today, I did not expect what we saw. Seven innings, 75 pitches, and dominant out of Rodrigo Lopez. Did anybody? I don't think any of us did. I mean, this was a situation going in, even in, in, at the pregame. I thought if we got a good five innings out of him and you, and you felt like if you had a chance to win, it would set your bullpen up so that you got to that place. You know, you heard Mike Quaddy talk about it, just getting to that position where you're using your bullpen properly, not having to make decisions in the fourth and fifth inning of ball games. Fantastic effort today. If you look at just about every one of these pitches, down in the zone, down in the zone, down in the zone, just a great Great effort, lots of tilt, ball moving away. You know that in seven innings, only five balls left the infield. Amazing effort from him today. Uh, I think surprised everybody, kept his team in it. He responded, got the three runs in the fourth inning from the offense and went back out there again and put more goose eggs up. Yeah, both guys, even Gavin Floyd, who gave up three runs in one inning. You look at the pitching numbers here. And Gavin Floyd, seven innings pitch. He gave up just three earned. He walked only one. He punched out eight. I mean, both guys pitched well enough to win, only Rodrigo Lopez was a little bit better. Yeah, well, Gavin Floyd, the, the White Sox pitching staff struck out ten guys, but that's not the name of it. It's, uh, you know, when you give up a home run uh, like he did to Ramirez, I was really kind of surprised he went out of the ballpark. Uh, what, you know, wasn't that bad of a pitch, but it was like one arm. That just goes to tell you how strong this guy is. But uh, then they had a couple of balls that didn't go out, which was kind of surprising. 
amazing. I guess the wind knocked it down. But you see Castro right here with that triple. I was really surprised you got a triple on that because that's only like 368. Uh, there's the home run there by Ramirez. But it's 368 to the wall, and yeah, you got this kid uh, making it in the 